hi guys welcome to another video so this is it this is the last video in our month-long painting a day challenge so in case you don't know for every weekday in the month of november i have been doing a painting a day recording it and uploading a video every weekday for the month of november with the exclusion of thanksgiving so this is day 20 so that means i have put up 20 videos this month and considering the fact that i usually do one video a week on thursdays which is normally like four or five videos a month to now this month have 20 videos in a month is a big accomplishment for me and it was really exciting it was a really fun process it was amazing getting to meet so many new artists and new people and the channel has benefited from you know more videos and that's been amazing and getting to talk with and meet more of you who are also making videos and also doing art and it's just been a really 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 great experience and i'm so grateful to have gotten through it and made it through the whole month part of me is a little sad to see it end but at the same time i'm excited because there's so many bigger projects even things that'll just take two days instead of one that I really am excited to jump into and to get back to working on and to bring new things to you guys. I, I needed this month to kind of take the time to try things, at least try things that I knew I could do if I just took the time to do them, but I never actually did. And to be honest, painting a landscape was like at the top of that list. It was like the number one thing that I had tried to do a few times in the past, but I keep hitting this stopping point where I get to a point, maybe halfway, two thirds of the way through the painting, where I know it needs something else. I know it needs more contrast or more details or something, but I don't really know how to do it. And then I quit. <laughs> so I've, I have several unfinished landscape paintings or studies and it was really interesting because I knew when I had gotten to that point today, like I knew when I was there, but quitting wasn't really an option. And I have you guys to thank for that because I knew that, I knew what today meant. I knew that this was the last day of our challenge and I knew that just stopping and not finishing this piece, there was no point in doing that, no benefit. I mean, I the reason I was doing this painting was to actually complete a landscape painting and to work through those hard moments and to work through those hard times and to take a step back when necessary and to get it done. So I'm really happy and I feel like ultimately I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It's definitely the best landscape piece I've done so far and I love those times when you work on something and it immediately makes you want to do something again. Like when you do, when you work with a certain medium or a certain technique and you go, man, that was amazing. I want to do it again. I want to try something a little bit different this time and you immediately want to start again. And that's how I felt after having done this piece. After this painting, I was like, man, I immediately want to try a different color palette or a different composition or a different layout. And I was so excited because right away I wanted to to jump in and do another one and those feelings can be so fleeting and it's such a great thing to hold on to. I um, was working with my Daniel Smith paints here. They're kind of the ones that I fall back on the most. I really like the colors that I have for them. It's kind of random and sporadic but I enjoy those colors and there are a lot of heavily granulating paints in the colors that I do have so it was really nice to get to work with those textures. There was ultramarine mixed in everywhere and that French ultramarine granulates like crazy so there was nice texture all around and it was really fun it was really fun and one of the most fun things about this piece was working with this brush I actually used this brush for most of the painting and it's one of my newer Chinese calligraphy brushes and I like this one a lot because it's a mid-sized one so it holds more water but at the same time comes to a fairly fine point so I was able to do larger washes with it, but also able to do finer things like the branches of the trees or the leaves on the forest floor. Oh, oh, I like this part. Yeah. I like to see the reflections in the water. And look how there's like a reflection there for a tree I hadn't painted yet. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the next thing I did was go in and paint that tree, but I feel like that kind of helped to solidify the idea that this was actually water 
and when it came to establishing the texture of what these things actually were that was some of my biggest struggle so the water i was terrified about i was terrified about having water that looked like water and the reflect the reflection tended ended up being the biggest contributor to making that at least sort of effective and then part of the way through the painting i realized that there were supposed to be like leaves on the ground and i was a little worried about that because i know that adding just brush strokes to a painting without being concise about direction and um, perspective and size and stuff like that can lend to the painting looking a bit flat but I did it and it turned out all right I had a, actually a lot of fun adding tiny little bits of detail to the water area just to make it look a little bit more glossy and still and calm and that was really fun I've done a little bit of work with watercolors painting water with watercolors before but that was more water and movement so waves and things like that Right around this part in the painting, something really awesome happened, and that was that my camera battery died. And I'm not actually being ironic, it really was awesome because when my camera battery started blinking, my camera was like, hey, I'm, I'm dying over here, I need a new battery, ah. So I had to get up and I had to leave my painting and go hunt around for my batteries. And when I found them and came back, I was able to see the piece with new eyes. and. That was really, really important actually. I was able to come back and look at it and just immediately know what it needed. Immediately be able to see like, oh yeah, I need some more background trees and I need some more texture with these leaves. Didn't I have leaves? Where'd those leaves go? So it was nice to be able to just walk away from it and then come back and go, oh yeah, that's what it needs. This part was what I hoped would have been my favorite part of the painting, and it pretty much was, and that was adding just some streaming light in with some gouache. And I used white mixed in with a tiny, tiny bit of blue gouache. I didn't want the white to be too glaring. And as soon as I started putting gouache on this painting, I wanted to put gouache everywhere. I wanted gouache leaves, gouache branches, gouache water, gouache everything. I just wanted to like add all kinds of gouache texture to this. And maybe someday I'll do something more like that, but I knew that if I actually wanted to complete this painting today and not still be editing this at like 11 o'clock at night, I needed to minimize the gouache. So <laughs> I had to keep that to a minimum, but I'm actually really excited to do a gouache landscape or many gouache landscapes, many watercolor, like just tons of landscapes all over the place. Ultimately, this challenge has left me excited to do anything and everything and I undertook some things that I didn't know I could do successfully and in a way that I would be satisfied with, and I did. So I'm so happy, and I'm so happy that you guys have been watching these videos. So thank you so much, like for real, it means so much to me. And I will see you guys next Thursday, and we're back to weekly videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.